This is just like a plug and play modem, which has been super helpful. Uh, every time I move, I just plug it in and that's my internet. I started loving the road life and started thinking seriously about tiny homes or a trailer. This was probably the biggest transformation. If I could redesign the space, I would probably do it a little different. I liked the look of it. I thought it added texture and warmth to the space. My name is Sarah Bronstein and this is my tiny house. Let's tour it. Welcome to my tiny kitchen. In here, I replaced countertops. We put in a new sink, new faucet. Everything in here was pretty original, including the refrigerator and oven stovetop. So I updated all of that. I knew I was gonna be living full time in here. So I did go with a bigger refrigerator, but this is uh, an RV specific refrigerator. It does run on electric instead of propane, which a lot of them do. I prefer that. Uh, I have a microwave, a full-size oven. I did a three burner stovetop. I kept the cabinet bases. I did put in new cabinet fronts. I went with the woven rattan inserts throughout. I liked the look of it. I thought it added texture and warmth to the space. Um, but it also allows air to get through, especially in the winter. The heat in here will go right through and heat the pipes. It also prevents mold and mildew and stuff from building up in the cabinets. This is my tiny little dish rack. I try to do dishes right after each meal. And this is my tiny little Nespresso machine that I hit up at least a few times a day. That's the kitchen. Welcome to my office slash living room. When I bought this trailer in here, this whole area was actually cleared out. They had two big oversized recliners in the front here. So I allocated this side of the space to be my office. I am an interior designer and real estate agent, but especially for design, I have the extra monitor um, to hook up to my laptop. That's really helpful. I also use this as my TV. This little nook has become my dog Albus's little lookout. He loves sitting up there like a cat. I designed this pullout sofa. It is a not a normal bed size, but it would be great if I resold it for kids or something like that to sleep on. Uh, so these drawers pull out. When you remove the pillows, you flip the top open and then lay the mattress back down. It's folded, but it extends out to cover the whole space. In this storage, I have my books, office supplies, art supplies, and then this back little drawer is the dog drawer. You can see I have an electric heater in the front. Uh, this trailer does have a full furnace system, propane furnace system that's original. I have yet to fix it, so I have been getting by with electric the last couple of winters and hope this one will be the same. Um, so this is just an infrared electric heater. I do try to turn them off and stuff when I leave, but these can be really great. I do one in the back when it's very cold, one in the front and it's kept warm through the winters. This is a little Wi-Fi box that some of you might be interested in. Uh, this is through T-Mobile, but I'm pretty sure Verizon and all the main guys have them now. This is just like a plug and play modem, which has been super helpful. Uh, every time I move, I just plug it in and that's my internet. I went to grad school in New York City and ended up being there for about eight years. When I decided to move to San Francisco, I ended up taking a four month road trip and drove around the country, mainly to national parks. And that's really where I started loving the road life and started thinking seriously about tiny homes or a trailer. In 2020, uh, during the pandemic, I was laid off. I was living in Portland, Oregon and had been planning, dreaming, thinking about tiny living for many years and thought, hey, the world's on fire and why not? So I put all my savings, all the money I had into buying this trailer. It was $9,000. I did put in probably another thousand before I left Oregon. And once I got it to North Carolina, I came up with a design plan for it and started updates. I don't have an exact tally at this point because I have done some updates since I moved into it, but I would say probably about 9,000 ended up 
going into to replacing everything, and that does include a new water heater. The majority of the budget probably went into the bathroom because we did the most work back there. I did a lot of the work myself. I hired somebody to do the plumbing and electrical updates, all in all turned out pretty good. <laughs> this is my tiny bathroom. Um, this was probably the biggest transformation. I did keep the cabinet base the same. This was the existing layout. I replaced the toilet and sink and countertop. This is a RV toilet. It is not composting or anything like that, but it is a plastic. It's a lot lighter. They had a porcelain toilet in here, so just a lot of weight. I put in new lighting. This whole area was like this giant mirror with lighting in it. It looked very, very 80s. The shower had a tub that came up kind of above the knees. Uh, so getting that out was its own process. We ended up having to cut the fiberglass. It was really built in here, but I knew I wanted kind of a walk-in wet room like space. Um, I chose the pink penny tile for the floor. If I could go back and do it again, I would have the guy that I hired to do all the plumbing. I would have him do the tile. I have never tiled anything and thought I'd do it myself. And, you know, it turned out fine, but it's definitely not perfect. Uh, so that would be something I would probably do different if I could go back in time. As far as storage, I have cleaning supplies and first aid stuff underneath the sink. Um, my skincare and uh, toothbrush is in this little cabinet. And then I still have to build, I ran out of rattan, but one day I'm gonna build a door for this storage. And I just use these kind of little containers to organize by, by product type um, to keep things easy to access in here. So this is kind of my closet space. This guy is a mix of pantry and tools and hardware. This is my coat closet. On this side, this is my closet closet. I just use containers from the container store, uh, drawers that pull out, and then I just run a bungee when I move to hold them all in place. And then this is where hanging storage and purses are kept and my instruments. So I am an interior designer. I started my own business in 2020. Before that, I was doing interior design for um, a property management company, largely working with Airbnbs, short-term rentals, and ROI-driven design, which I think was really helpful coming into this type of space. And since then, I have niched into tiny house design and get to help people with their, their tiny projects, which is great. Um, they can be really challenging to make the best use of all the space and it's so I think so personal to each occupant how they would use the space I'm just really passionate about helping people do that I also just got my real estate license uh, last year so I'm licensed here in North Carolina and I primarily work uh, for real estate here in the Asheville area but I still take projects all over the country for interior design right now I have some in Oregon Colorado California and a new one coming on in Vermont as well as a few here locally welcome to my bedroom this is an RV full-size bed uh, it was already the layout of the space. I largely kept the same. Again, replaced the cabinet fronts. A lot of the storage is actually not totally full, but I have like sewing and just kind of knickknacks in here, um, towels and sheets. We built this space out differently. It came up really high. I think it was the original build out. I wanted to drop it a little bit so it didn't feel quite so heavy in here. We did storage underneath these. These pull up. If I could redesign the space, I would probably do it a little different where I didn't have to clear everything off every time I want to get in there. But I largely use this um, underneath storage for blankets and stuff, the comforter in the summertime, stuff that I don't need to access regularly. And then under here is the water heater. Um, and this slides open so it has access from inside. Um, and there's also a box outside to access that. There is storage underneath the bed as well. And I just have crates of shoes um, tucked under the bed. So that's how I store my footwear. I am Sarah Bronstein. Um, my business is Suka Interior Design. You can find me on most platforms, but I mainly hang out on Instagram. 
Uh, my Instagram handle is Zuka Interior Design. My website is in, uh, ZukaInteriorDesign.com uh, where you can find more about me and my work. Thanks for watching.